Don't forget to click the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and click the alert bell so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Go ahead and click that like button too. We really appreciate your support for the channel. Hello, welcome to another episode of Authorized. I am your hostess, C.M. Smith, and today we will be reading The Granddaughter Necklace, written by Sharon Dennis White and illustrated by Bagram Be Back to You. Once there was a girl named Frances who took a boat across the sea. Her mother gave her a glittering necklace that would belong to me someday. Handed down through generations, it's a necklace worn by the women and girls in my family. When I first saw the crystal beads, they hung on my mother's neck. Night times when she tucked me into bed, that necklace shone in the lamplight. I like that necklace, Mommy. Where did you get it? This necklace belonged to your grandma and the other grandmas before her, she said. My mother then began to tell me story after story, first about herself and then about the other girls and women in my family who had worn the necklace. Like the necklace, these stories have been handed down. My mother's name is Yvonne. When Yvonne was a little girl, she loved to talk. She chatted with her friends in school instead of listening to the teacher. Her teacher sent a note home. Yvonne's mother wasn't pleased, but she wasn't harsh. There are times you must keep quiet, dear, she said, and times you must speak up. Yvonne learned her lesson and listened to her teacher, but when the school put on a play, she spoke right up and got the leading part. The play was based on Cinderella. Her mother made her a fancy ball gown, and so she'd feel like a real princess Yvonne's mother gave her the glittering necklace. Good luck, sweetheart, she said. Yvonne's mother's name was Mildred. When Mildred was a little girl, her house was in the mountains. But she left home when she was young to live with an aunt in a far-off town. Mildred's parents had 13 children, but her aunt Stella had only one. In a home with fewer mouths to feed, Mildred would have more to eat, and Aunt Stella's little girl would have someone to play with. Besides, Aunt Stella was quite well off, a seamstress. On the day that Mildred left home, her whole family piled into the wagon with her. Her father drove the horses, and her mother held her suitcase. The family rode across a bridge to a train station where the train tracks ran along the river. When she heard the train whistle, Mildred cried. It was time to say goodbye. Her mother was the one who hugged her hardest. Just as they were parting, she lifted the necklace off her neck and gave it to her daughter. I love you, darling girl, she said. I love you too, said Mildred. Mildred's mother's name was Cordelia. When Cordelia was a little girl, she had a glorious voice. Her favorite hymn was, His Eye is on the Sparrow. Even though she was very young, at church on Sunday mornings, she sang solos. And on Monday mornings, she helped with the wash. She and her mother carried the family's soiled clothes and sheets outside to the yard and tossed them into a metal tub filled with soap and hot oil water. One time, the water splashed too high, and poor Cordelia's hand was burned. Cordelia's mother rubbed the burn. She rubbed the burn with aloe, but the hand was badly scarred. Cordelia was ashamed of how it looked and refused to leave the house, even for church. But then the special Sunday came, when she would be baptized. Her mother laid out a clean dress for her, and her father polished her shoes. Her mother brushed her hair section by section until it was all curled. But when it was time to leave, Cordelia dragged her feet. 
If I go to be baptized, everyone will see the scar. The other girls and boys might call me ugly. Cordelia's mother gently took her daughter's injured hand and placed the crystal necklace in her palm. That scar can't touch the beauty that's inside you, Cordelia. Wear these beads, my angel. Hold your head up high and remember who you are. Cordelia's mother name, Cordelia's mother's name, was Sally. When Sally was a little girl, she liked to bake. She got up early every day to help her mom bake two dozen biscuits. The biscuits baked in a big cast iron stove. When they were done, Sally's father ate three or four of them with eggs and homemade sausage. Sally and her mother each could easily eat two, especially with fresh apple butter. As for the rest of the biscuits, they were left on the sill for lunch and supper. But then a morning came when a hand reached through the window and a single biscuit disappeared from the plate. Sally peeked outside. In the yard, there was a hungry looking man and his family. Offering him the plate, Sally went to get the flour and began to bake. After they've had their breakfast, they'll need more to eat, she told her mother and father. My girl sure can bake, boasted Sally's father. What makes me glad, said Sally's mother, is her great big heart. She hung the beads at Sally's feet. Sally's mother's name was Frances. When Frances was a little girl, she lived in Ireland. After she came to America, she wound up on a farm. They say she met an older gentleman named Theodore on a rainy road. He helped her up onto his horse and invited her to his home, a farmhouse on a hill where, she, where he lived all by himself. They became a family and had a girl named Sally. They grew vegetables and flowers and raised chickens. They say that when folks stopped by their house, there was pound cake and an extra pipe, and that Frances was a good storyteller, and that she spoke with a brogue. As for the glittering necklace she once wore, it belongs to me now. It happened on the day I turned 16. My mother, brothers, and I were leaving for my party. It should have been a happy day, but I was feeling sad. I didn't want to say, but she guessed it was about my day. Why are you unhappy? My mother asked. Since my parents had gotten a divorce, I didn't see my father much. On my big day, he wouldn't be with me. If your dad could see you now, he'd be very proud, said my mom. We walked out to the car. Happy birthday, sugar, she said, tossing me the necklace. I caught the beads in the air. But that's yours, I said. I've worn it all these years, said my mother. It's your turn now. After all, it's a granddaughter necklace. Why do you call it that? I asked. Because everyone who wears it is somebody's granddaughter, she said with a laugh. As she fastened it around my neck, I lit up inside. I am Sharon, daughter of Yvonne. Yvonne was the daughter of Mildred. Mildred was the daughter of Cordelia, who was the daughter of Sally. <laughs> Sally was the daughter of Francis, and Francis was the daughter of a woman whose name I have not yet discovered. I wish I knew who she was. <laughs> I like to sing and cook. I grow roses in my garden. I write stories for a living. And now I have my own daughter. My girl Georgia plays catch with her dad after school or goes for a ride on her bike. Sometimes we bake an apple pie to pack up for a family hike. But her favorite thing is music. She's quite good at piano. In fact, tomorrow is her big recital. I know that she'll be nervous, but she's also brave. I'll surprise her with the granddaughter necklace after she's through playing. I'm proud of you, I'll tell her. Not just now, but every day. This necklace says you're one of us and forever loved. The end. So, what did you think about that story? And now I have some questions, like I always do. Um, is there 
uh, like a a necklace or a piece of jewelry that is handed down in your family? Or is there a special piece of jewelry that you've seen your grandmother wear? And if so, have you ever asked her about it? And where she got it? And for the boys, maybe there is uh, like a handkerchief or a tie or a watch that maybe your grandfather wears or a hat. And, um, you know, maybe this type of thing has been passed down. Have you noticed any of your grandparents wearing something that they've had for years? And have you asked them where they got it from? There could be a really interesting story behind that. So isn't it interesting when you just look around and start asking questions uh, just about maybe some of the family portraits that are hanging in the home? Um, have you ever considered uh, talking to your grandparents or even your parents or some of the elders in your family about, well, who is this in this picture? And where did this person come from? Are we from, you know, ask, ask your parents, uh, your grandparents, well, where were you born? And where was your mother born? You know, this story, as I read it, I don't know about you, but I was fascinated by the, um, the stories of each mother. So, uh, like when Mildred, she was born in the mountains, and then... When Sally was learning how to bake, and she baked with a big cast iron stove. So, as the you heard about the stories from each um, uh, girl as she was growing up, and when she received the necklace, it was interesting to see how they were living, what they went through, and at what time in their childhood they received the necklace. Isn't it interesting? You know, if you start asking, I'm sure that you will find that your grandparents have interesting stories from their childhood, and they could probably recall some of the stories of their that their mothers told them. So I hope uh, this book inspired both boys and girls to start asking the elders in their family questions about their family and their history and how they acquired maybe certain articles of clothing or, uh, you know, pieces of jewelry and what types of traditions are special to their family. Trust me, they are going to be so excited and happy. That she has. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I did, and I'll see you next time on Authorized. <laughs>